Good morning, good evening, good evening, good afternoon, whenever it is that you are tuning in to this uh, lesson time and visiting time with your Sunday school teachers. Uh, uh, we do miss you guys. Hi, how are you? Uh, coming to you from, once again from my bedroom with my favorite minion. Only, only we can't see him. You've got the screen tilted. You can't see him? Oh. My, my minion, he's right there. Okay, well, let me... No, uh, no, there. Now we can just yeah. barely see him. Okay. A screenshot. Good. It's, it's actually a bank uh, that is somewhat full, and Ian's very, my oldest son is very excited about seeing how much money is in it, because he, think, he thinks it's his and he can use it, uh, which he probably will. And um, that is the only thing, I had several things, including the TV, up on my dresser when the earthquake hit a couple years ago. And that's the only thing that survived. It didn't break. Wow. So tough. That is. <laughs> I think those those denim overalls are tough. That must be good. Yeah. Or all, be all it. the coins in his feet kept him grounded. Mm hmm Oh, hi, Miss Karen. How are you? And what have you been doing this week? Well, I've been big surprise. I've been sewing masks. I'm up to 227. Is that all? I've just had a friend come by today and she picked up some masks and kind of sheepishly asked if one neighbor of hers is an elderly friend and he could use two masks. And I said, well, if you'd have told me earlier, I would have had those ready for you too. So mm -hmm. I'll get those made after this and she can come back and pick them up tomorrow. So then I'll be 229. 229. Yes. I wanted to ask you, so you have an area. I did find my mask, by the way. I told you I found oh, it right. Oh, good. Yeah. We, we did, I did find it. And I had another one I've been using too, but I've been, I'm back to using yours because yours is much better. And um, it has a little pocket though with an insert, correct? Yeah, so you I, could put a coffee filter in mm -hmm. or a folded up paper towel. It just gives you some more layers of protection. What I, what I read this morning, what I heard on the news this morning is that a new uh, use for pantyhose, you put nylon, Oh, okay. And you cut a square or something and you put it down in the mask and, and you could put it down in your pocket and, and it actually filters out to medical grade. It, it makes your mask more of a, almost a medical grade mask. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to do that. I've if anybody has any old pantyhose, pantyhose lying around, then you can use it for that. So that. Th this is not of use at all to any young person under probably the age of 25, I'm guessing, who's a female. We might have because I, I don't think anybody nobody really wears that anymore right or just I, I don't yeah I don't think they do anymore yeah I know I quit years ago <laughs> well you know if you go visit the queen you do have to wear pantyhose true I I don't know if I would have yeah. to either but you know whatever whatever they require I suppose if I'm going to go see the queen you'll I'll do, do it whatever, I'll do whatever they say <laughs> um so today uh, my week has been pretty good, just more uh, taking care of the kids. And um, we got the grill out for the first time since October yesterday and did some grilling, and that was fun. And um, yeah, it was just every day, kind of half the time I'm, I'm asking Jessica, so what, what, what is today? Is today Saturday or Sunday? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. So other but than that of the sun i've actually opened up windows it's it's mm -hmm. actually hot in the house here we made the Not mistake we did do that and it felt great uh I'm, i think it was last sunday actually when it was like this sunny outside and a little bit warmer and we opened the windows and then we left and we went for a long drive just to get out and, and be out on the road and just drive around see some see some of the see if anything's blooming etc and then we came back several hours later and it was freezing in the house. So we should have closed the windows, but uh, so we're almost there. We're almost at spring. I've seen a little bit of bloom. The, the pussy will freeze. And, uh, yeah. So we're excited about that here at the, at the household. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of roads today, our lesson is from the gospel of Luke chapter 24 and a familiar story, at least I know familiar to me, um, uh, it, we probably talk about it every year, um, at least every other year or so. 
and the walk to Emmaus. Emmaus was a town or a, a village outside of Jerusalem. It would be like um, walking from Anchorage to Eagle River or something like that, like about that, about that length. So um, about that distance rather. And so we don't know, there's some travelers on the road is after Jesus uh, has uh, uh, come out of the tomb is after Easter and, but, but not everybody has had an, an encounter with him yet, including these two travelers uh, who are on the road traveling away from Jerusalem. They are uh, dis they're despondent about what has taken place, the fact that Jesus was crucified and, and was put in the tomb and they have not heard the news. And um, we see as they receive the news and, and he interacts with them and they don't know who he is. It's, it's just a, such an interesting story and I really like what we can take from that. Uh, and we'll talk about that as we read it. Um, how, how familiar familiar are you with with this scripture? I, I are, think I've studied it a lot. Yeah. What is your what's your off the top of your head? I'm putting you on the spot. What is your off this, the top of the it, head? It prompt me on this one. I know. Um, I did. I'm sorry. Um, Oh dear, I can't. All of a sudden, I've drawn a complete blank. That's okay. You know what? Let's just start reading, and and uh, any comments that you have or anything that you want to add into it, let's just do that. Okay. Okay. So Luke chapter twenty four, verse thirteen, mm -hmm. on the road to Emmaus. Now that day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were walking with each other. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in three, these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. So I'll pick up in verse 24. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. It's not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their command, uh, companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. So, number one, you got the name right. Cleopas, Cleopas, Cleopas. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, uh, but you got it right. Just authority, Cleop people will think that's it. Yeah, Cleopas, I think, is, is the correct way to say it. Um, but what I found, what I find uh, about the story is, why was it that they weren't able to 
recognizing whether what was it some kind of spiritual um whether he was doing that to the point you know did he not recognize him was his face shrouded did he look different um we really don't know why they didn't recognize him he I'm might getting, have been wearing a mask he had a covid mask on could have been wearing a covid mask that's yeah very appropriate absolutely could have been covering his face could have been a dusty road he had a you know something wrapped around his his face and and they just didn't know they just couldn't tell who he was um but regardless of of how i always find it strange to me that they start to say first of all they're getting indignant at him like how in the world do you not know what has taken place uh, the enormity of this you you rube who does not understand what's going on but and then he sort of feels like he, you know, kind of fires back of like, well, how foolish you are to not realize that this had to take place. And then he starts from the beginning with Moses and walks them through the scriptures, walks them through the prophecies, explaining to them. But what I like, what I like about that is it doesn't highlight that they were just like, well, I don't want to hear what you have to say, stranger. They interacted with each other. They were honest with each other. They, the emotions were high back and forth, talking about things that were important. And then when it looks like, okay, we're at our destination and it looks like he's going to continue on, like, okay, well, we've had a good chat. I'll see you later. They say, no, come with us, spend more time with us. We're, we find you interesting or perhaps mildly irritating. We don't know what their reasoning was. Um, it was also very customary for folks when they when they were closer to their home or at their home to invite strangers in on the road who were traveling to make sure they had sustenance and rest and things like that. So that makes a lot of sense. Hospitality, a, a very big part of the culture back then. So, but they still, even after all of that time, after all that uh, explanation, after talking about the scriptures, they don't, rec they still don't recognize him. So we don't know what their, they knew Jesus or they knew of him. They had seen him. Maybe they were in some of those crowds throughout the gospels that we hear about of that Jesus was teaching and preaching to the crowd. So he probably saw lots of people. We don't know their level of intimacy with him before this. Um, but regardless, um, it's just an interesting interaction and um, I, I wanted to share a story with you. I, I used to work odd hours when I worked at CNN. So I would work like five o'clock in the morning and I'd do that shift for a while. So like five o'clock in the morning, 4.30 in the morning sometimes, or even earlier, depending on if there was breaking news or things like that. And then sometimes I would shift and I would go back to like 4 p.m. and I would work till midnight, one o'clock in the morning, things like that. And so it wouldn't, it would be maybe six months at a time or a year at a time whenever the shift would change. So uh, when I was working the early shift, I tried to not come home and take naps, but sometimes I would take naps. And we're talking sometimes power naps, like two, three, three and a half hours, just conking out, being so tired and your body just not wanting to do this getting up so early and, and getting home in the middle of the afternoon and sort of not knowing what to do with yourself at that point. I was single at the time, so I didn't really have anybody else I had to take care of. But I remember one, one uh, morning or one afternoon, actually, I woke up and uh, freaked out because I, I could look outside the window and I could see it, it looked like dawn. Like it looked like the morning, which normally when I was waking up, there was no light because I'd wake, woken up so early and I'm freaking out. I jump in the shower real quick. I'm calling work. Hey, I'm on my way in. They sounded confused. Um, I'm throwing clothes on. I'm tearing down the road in my car, traffic and things like that. And then I hear the afternoon radio personalities on the road, on, on the, the radio. And it still takes a minute for me to realize that really what I did was I went home, took a nap, woke up and thought it was morning and thought I was late for work. <laughs> so I, you know, I just had to go, I probably hit a drive through and took food home and just, just <laughs> tail. Cold. 
<laughs> tail tucked between my legs. But my point about that story is what's interesting is in, in a highly emotional moment, uh, anxious time, I could not tell the difference between dawn and dusk. And I didn't take the time to evaluate because I was just all of a sudden panic, hurry, get ready, leave. I wonder if not these two travelers were in a similar mindset. So they were not able to see Jesus because they were highly emotional and only focused on what was right in front of them, even though he technically was right in front of them, but you know what I mean, just the, the emotions that they were, that were right in front of them. And they weren't able to see past just what was obvious in front of their face. And I wonder too, if they were afraid because the, the disciples had been, you know, in a locked room kind of hiding. Right. And it sounds, you know, they, they were, sounds like they were followers of Jesus or, or believe in what he said. Cause they, you know, said we, we thought he was going to be the one. Yeah. So they, they probably were afraid too. Oh, absolutely. That's probably why I, we're assuming they lived there in this village. So they were probably heading home, maybe getting out because they could have been, they could have been uh, fearing for their lives. So all of that going on. And so when there's high emotion, when there's um, a lot of strife going on, think things that can blind you from seeing what is uh, the truth that is right in front of your face, very, a very human moment that I appreciate very much from scripture. Um, when reality snaps back, when does reality snap back, snap back for them? When do they recognize Jesus? When he's doing, doing the communion. Yes. So they had the moment to experience the scriptures and they hear their story told to them by Jesus while they're on the road. Then they have the opportunity to experience the giving of hospitality, which further grounds them in who they are as Jewish people, as, as, as the, the Hebrew people. And then they see Jesus come and offer the act of communion, which was one of the last things that he did before he was taken to the cross. And it was through all of that grounding, grounding in scripture, grounding in tradition, and then God being revealed in, in that moment that we now celebrate 2,000 plus years later, that they, they then recognize and see, can see God despite what is happening in their, in their orbit, what is happening in their world. And I think they kind of feel it because at the, it says, how in the world did we not see it? How did we not see it? I know that I've asked that question before. How did I not recognize that I needed to do this or that maybe I even saw God in that over here and I didn't react in the way that I would have liked, but they didn't sink back and get mad at themselves. They went to see the disciples. They went to tell them the news and they went to go and I'm guessing just be with other believers who can say, wow, this, this thing has happened and we have experienced it. There was just one more way of seeing how Jesus was reaching out before he was to leave this, to leave this earth after his resurrection. And I just love this story and I love what it reveals about the importance of our traditions, about the importance of knowing our stories, meaning the scriptures, and the importance of, of um, continuing to, to do things in church that have grounding in our traditions, meaning communion, reading of scriptures, prayer, all of that. And it has the opportunity to reveal God to us every week. Um, how have you been approaching like your Sunday mornings, uh, in preparation for the time when we see David on our 46 inch TVs or whatever we have. Um, well, it's a lot, a lot more different, a lot different than, mm -hmm. than I was before. Cause I'm not worried about, I've got to get up and get a shower yeah. and get dressed. And, um, as my so mom used to say, putting her face on. 
That's right. Put your and your yeah. Sunday and your Sunday go to meet and close. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, it it seems like it's a much calmer process. Yeah. It's it's just you know getting breakfast, getting a cup of tea, and 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 just kind of easing into the service, rather yeah. than uh, you know oh, oh you know I've got to get this or oh, I should have ironed that or this doesn't go with that and you know got to go find this and okay now hurry I'm I'm running late I've got to race to the church to get there before you do so <laughs> yeah, so, so we one of us is there before the kids and, right. Do you find that you do you find that you're able to experience it in a similar way to to the way that you you were when we were there physically together? I know it's um, different, but well, it's it is it's a whole lot different because for the, the since last September I've been in the nursery during church, right? So I am getting to sit in the and actually hearing the sermons. Um, <laughs> Because really, I, I just got to hear a couple sermon, you know, just from July, July and August before then I was was in the nursery. Um, so I, I've thoroughly been enjoying that part of it. Although I miss the boys. Yeah. Well, you know what you can do? You can. I know this is not socially distancing, but maybe you could come over and oh, <laughs> no. take care of the boys during the service. You can. Sort That's right. To what David's saying, and Jessica and I will go do something else. No, I'm kidding. That's um, right. <laughs> we could give you that experience again. That is not a problem. We, uh, we can make it happen. We can make that happen. Um, you know, one thing I was thinking about is maybe w what we ought to do next week is try to see if any of the uh, any of our guys and girls want to join us uh, and do a Sunday school where we have a and just record it, have a big Zoom meeting. Uh that that's a great idea yeah, i i can't believe i hadn't thought about it till now I, I i know that i haven't talked to several of them in several months so yeah that would be that would be nice uh so we'll try to um try to get that going for next week or if not next week the week after so and we, and we could even do it sunday morning yeah at, at the regular time or or if you know later another time works that's a good idea. It did, that didn't occur to me either. Well, there we go. We're like the people on the road to him. We're, we've had things revealed to us today. That's right. That's then, right. then you have someone else to ask a question to. I won't be the only victim. That's right. Um, well, anything we can pray for before we go? Um, well, I was telling you, my, my brother-in-law, Wayne, has been taken to the hospital and they're keeping him they're trying to figure out what's going on with him. Um, and of course, my sister can't be there with him. And that's driving her crazy because she knows that they're not going to take, you know, as good a care of him as she can. What, um, is her, what is her name? Her name is Kathy. And my brother-in-law is Wayne. Um, so just, you know, wisdom for the doctors to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Um, of course, keeping Leo and his family, you know, still, still remembering him in our prayers. Mm -hmm. so, those two things well and i and i i i have found that that my prayer life has been more of the thankfulness um whether it be selfishly or you know that i'm thankful that i'm not dealing with the things that you know for one reason or another we can't explain why it's hitting some areas harder than others and some people yeah. are struggling more than others but um, just praying for those folks as well as just being being in thankfulness for um, for our situation that we're protected at least at this point in time and so that's as good a thing to pray for as any so yes sir. well uh, let's pray and then we'll go about the rest of our day okay Lord we just ask uh, ask that you continue to keep uh, to keep us safe, our loved ones safe, and we're thankful for, um, we're thankful that we are safe, and also wanting to pray for and dealing with the the um, the thoughts and and the prayers and the love we want to send um, to those who are struggling with um, with illness, with loss of family members, with loss of um, 
of employment, with uh, all of the things that are that are causing strife and stress and anxiety in our world right now. And uh, Lord, just uh, continue to offer up to us the ways in which we can continue to help and ease those burdens. Uh, the same way that I know that, that that is what your desire is for, 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 uh, for all of us. I want to lift up uh, this, uh, this afternoon, Wayne and Kathy, and that Wayne would get the care that he needs and um, lift up all of those that, uh, that have had recent losses in life, as well as um, just those that are just dealing with some, some really hard times right now. And we, we pray for them today. We thank you for just being a good God and for a God that we know that loves us and wants us to have connection. Um, and, and I ask that you continue to, um, to let us, to, to give us ways to, to connect as, as people and as God's people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right. Well, thank you, Karen. Enjoyed it once again. And, um, We'll, uh, we'll see if we can get a big group meeting, uh, if not next Saturday, maybe next Sunday morning. That sounds great. All right. And we'll have to figure it out because I am definitely technologically challenged. <laughs> I'll be in touch. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.